Welcome back to the Gamer Muscle YouTube channel. In this video, we're taking a look at the early access of World of Speed. Now you might have gathered by the title that it's another one of those World of Games. World of Tanks, World of Warplanes, World of Crippling Inequality and Inability for Humanity to Work Out Their Troubles. Oh no, no, that's reality. But World of Speed basically takes that concept, the free-to-play, microtransaction, grind your way through the game wondering why you're bothering spending your time to play it and brings that to racing with with cars now first things first and the question that i was looking to be answered when i first heard about this game I and mean, it's been in development for quite a long time i think they've gone through some cycles with it is uh, whether or not it's realistic and no no it's not realistic it's very much an arcade game so much so that you're probably going to actually want to just play it with a keyboard, not even a gamepad. They they very clearly designed it for with some really sort of snappy arcade drift mechanics for taking tight corners, and it's got sort of smoothing for your keyboard inputs. So if you haven't got any equipment at all, it's one of those games you, you just sort of just jump in with your keyboard and casually play, really, and definitely not a simulator in the slightest. Now, in terms of how it actually works, it really is exactly the same as those other World of Games in that you've got an initial starting vehicle and you then just join up to races. It puts you in a lobby with people that have similar spec vehicles and you race against them. You can bet at the start of a race once you're level two to, to increase your cash and uh, then based off your position, how well you're doing races, you, you get XP, you get cash, you get some other points, which you can then spend on upgrading your vehicle, which then lets you buy new vehicles, go to higher levels, take part in different tier races and uh, continue, continue until you die of old age. The closest sort of game I'd compare this to is a more classic kind of Need for Speed game, like the Need for Speed Underground series but in multiplayer with a gambling component. But the um, the best part of this game for me, I think, is the, the car customization, because you can actually do quite a lot of changes to the body where there's loads of different components. For example, you see with our Toyota we've got here, this is after we've been playing for a little bit, we've got a nice upside down aeroplane stuck on the back. We've got a rear diffuser. We put some side panels on. You can change the bonnets, but we ran out of money at that point, so we didn't do that. There's, there's a lot of stuff you could change the paint colour, the wheel rims, and that's with every car that's in the game. We've, we're literally just driving the first car we've got here. We've totally uh, modded it out to the max because because why not? That's, that's what you do with these games. You get the worst car possible and you try and make it look good. Now, in terms of the visuals and the graphics, I actually think it looks pretty nice. You will notice, those of you that have played Project Cars 1 and uh, are looking at Project Cars 2, some of the environments in this are shared by those games. I think they're slightly different still, but the, for example, um, the Azure Coast Track and some other places have obviously been crossed over. So it's quite fun seeing them in an arcade game versus a game more on the realistic side. Um, but it also includes its own original tracks and street tracks that you probably haven't seen anything else. And for the most part, the graphics are actually really quite nice. It has all the same sort of visual effects that you see in Project Cars. Again, I think this is using the Madness game engine, which is why it's got the same sort of fidelity to it. The car models as well, actually, are surprisingly nice, especially when you go in the garage and you're rotating around your car. You can really appreciate all the little nooks and crannies of the various vehicles that they've got in the game, and then you can really appreciate the different modifications when you apply them to your car. On the downside, though, the game does tend to have some performance issues at this point in time. I can only hope that it's, uh, it's to do with it being in early access and that'll be ironed out like a beautiful lady or man ironing some boxer shorts by the time the game is actually out of early access. But for now, regardless of the graphic settings I put it on, I seem to get occasional stutter and some just le less performance than you'd expect to get and it's just not working flawlessly in terms of frame rate. Sound as well as occasional bugs at the moment when you're hitting the rev limiter it can click the sound a bit and some weird things happen. That might just be on specific vehicles and again I assume that's the kind of thing that will not be in the final non-early access version of the game. And all in all this, the sounds really aren't going to blow your ears off with excitement. It's, you're not talking race room racing experience or dirt rally sounds here. The, the cars, they sound a little bit bland to be honest and that, that could be something that would... Uh, definitely spice things up. I mean, even uh, games like Split Second, I remember, having absolutely fantastic sounds. I think for arcade racers, good, if, if not over-the-top cheesy sound effects, to me, make it a lot more exciting. So, sounds a little bit dull in this and uh, could be a lot better. 
So really, what's, what's the Game of Muscle verdict on this? Well, actually, the actual racing in it at times can be quite fun with other cars, especially approaching it more as an arcade game, just knocking into people, doing cheeky things. And then having the gambling mechanic does add a reasonable amount of tension to you wanting to win and get your money to then be able to get car components and upgrade them. So it can be surprisingly addictive, and um, that's why I generally try to avoid these types of games like The Plague. I know that I can get sucked into them and I'm so tight I'm never going to actually spend money on them, which means you spend ages just trying to get money inside the game to then unlock stuff. So for me, I, I generally try and avoid these, but if you do like spending tons of your time grinding away and you especially like doing the car modification thing and just appreciating the visuals and then you like the online uh, arcade component of the actual racing, then I think this could actually be really quite enjoyable for a lot of players. I'd probably say it's mostly going to be enjoyable for younger players or people that aren't, you know, don't have the cash available to buy a full retail title and they just want something they can jump in and play casually. Rather a shame though at the moment in, in its sort of early access state that you do actually have to spend $6.99 to get into it in the first place. And I think really it'd be nicer if they actually just had a free to play version at the beginning. Partly so that it just gets as many users playing it to start with because um, these types of games really do benefit from being as active as possible because it makes the queue time uh, shorter. At the moment it can take up to two minutes before you actually get put into a race event. And also I think people that get into these for free and really enjoy it then you know they, they go okay I, I will buy a, a credit pack or some upgrade pack that lets you progress faster or modify the vehicle without having to do as many races. Now I haven't given the game enough time to see how brutal that cutoff point is between grinding and having to put money in to get stuff because I know from playing World of Warplanes there was a point where you could actually play quite well uh, without spending any money on it and have a reasonably good time um, and not need to upgrade but then you hit that sort of brick wall where the game says no <laughs> you have to spend your money if you really genuinely want to actually play the game properly to a basic level so it'll be interesting to see how that pans out with this but early access at this point in time so i'm sure some things are, are, are gonna change with the title when it actually launches properly end verdict i would personally i'd keep an eye on this i think the just the jump in arcade racing and the gambling mechanic to me Combined with the car modifications, that's actually quite nice and quite addictive. So when the game actually comes out of early access and has a bit more polish to it, I'm definitely going to revisit it and I think it might actually be quite fun. But uh, there you go. That is our first impressions and first look at World of Speed. If you've got any questions yourself, just drop them in the, uh, in the comments underneath the video. I'll try and answer them. Also, don't forget to check out other videos on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like and all that business. And uh, we, we're going back to simulators. None of this arcade nonsense. Although this, this game actually did make me want to go back in and drive the old Project Gotham racing and some of the old classics. It, there's something about this that just sort of made me go, hmm, I haven't played any arcade driving games for a while now. So, uh, well, we might have to cover some of them on the channel. But there you go. Until the next video, guys, thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.